Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person and I sell yarn through my website yarnaddict.co.uk. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing. I have just come back from holiday. I'm filming this the day after I came back from holiday but I won't be out till like a week later. Um, and while I was on holiday I reached 2,000 subscribers. So I promised in the last podcast that when I reach 2,000 subscribers there will be a giveaway and I will talk about that later in the video so do watch till the end. So in today's episode I'm going to share a bit from my recent holiday in Spain. Um, we came back last night, the return home was uh, adventurous <laughs> so I will tell you a bit about that as well. So it will be a bit of a Spain vlog and I will also share what I've been knitting while I was away and what I'll be, we'll be focusing on for the next week or so. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I am wearing my um, Knitting for Olive top. It hasn't got a name yet, so I need to decide on the name. It has a lace at the bottom. I can't stand up so you can see the whole thing. What I will do when I've written the pattern and everything, I'm wearing a black bra underneath, which is probably not a good idea. I was actually wearing something else and I'm filming two videos back to back so I thought I will just change quickly. It's quite warm in here so I may have to take this off at some point and put my t-shirt back on because it's quite warm in here today. But I thought I would just try and film um, these links in between the uh, Spain clips before I go off to my next, uh, I've got an appointment for this afternoon so I just thought I would try and do a little bit of filming before I go just to try and get ahead of myself a little bit because tomorrow I'll be teaching all day then we've got a three day weekend so next week is only a four day week and I've got a lot to do next week. To open the window slightly because it is very very hot today and the sun is streaming in here now and now my lighting's gone all funny that's a bit better um yeah it's gone very hot in here today and i am roasting <laughs> so i've just opened my window a little bit so if you hear any noise that's why we rented a flat in alicante we rented an airbnb we had been to Alicante loads of times before. My parents used to own a flat just um, an hour south of Alicante and we've been holding there for the last 20 years. They sold the flat last year, last autumn, um, which I was very sad about. But we decided we'd take this opportunity to explore Alicante in a different way. I do find it quite funny that our first foreign holiday after my parents sold their flat was to the same area that we've been visiting for the last 20 years. I think we just felt a few months ago that we really wanted a holiday and I think we both quite missed going there. We we kind of got quite attached to that area I think because we've been going there for so long. So we decided let's try and see if we can do a city break in Alicante. We are used to being able to have a car so when we first used to go to our parents flat we used to hire a car and then um, they, when they retired they actually bought a car and kept that there so we'd use their car while we were there 
So we've had a car. We, we used to having a car out there. This time, because we were staying in the centre of Alicante, we decided not to hire a car. The Airbnb we rented was nice. It was freshly furbished, uh, refurbished, um, very neutral, um, clean, fresh, bright, uh, quite sort of sparsely furnished I would say you kind of got the impression it's been furnished by a bloke I don't know why but it was very kind of minimalist um only had the basics but it was comfortable very comfortable so far it looked very nice and bright and we were very happy with it two issues um one we knew about one I suspected no three issues actually two we knew about one I suspected I really like to sit on the balcony when we're in Spain and my parents had quite a nice balcony and this um flat looked out over a square and we had a lovely view towards the Santa Barbara Castle in Alicante. So I was really looking forward to sitting out on the balcony. In the photos, the way they photographed the balcony, I did suspect it was quite small. But I was hoping there would be a chair out there. And I thought, if it's not, as long as there's a chair in the kitchen, I can move that out. Well, in the kitchen, they had like a breakfast bar. And they had these bar stools around it. And the bar stools were really high. Um, so if I'd taken a bar stool out there, for one thing, it wouldn't have been that comfortable. And also, I would have been like level with the railing. And I just, I don't know, it just felt a bit too high. So I didn't sit on the balcony, but the sofa was really comfortable. And um, I could look out into the square from where the sofa was. So it wasn't too bad. But I do wish that there had been a chair on the balcony. The other thing was the noise. Um, this square only had one business on it. And that was a, a bar, coffee shop, a bar restaurant place. And that was just below us. There was a big tree kind of which covered most of the outside seating area of the bar which we looked straight down onto but bars in Spain restaurants in Spain are open quite late and a lot of people sit outside when the weather's warm so it was noisy till quite late and even though the street was very quiet it was like a residential street there was still a lot of traffic through there at night and in Spain, in cities especially, they do things like empty your bins every night. So you have these communal skips. So every they're dotted around in various streets and squares and things. And you just find the nearest one to you and put your rubbish in there. And they get emptied every single night. And I don't know whether this was happening here, but my daughter was saying when she lived in Madrid, they actually sprayed the streets every night as well. And I think they did that here because I think I could hear it. So there were quite a bit of noise. Um, but we slept all right, so that was okay. Occasionally you get people walking around singing or shouting or whatever. You know what it's like. Um So we had decided before we went that this wasn't going to be just like a traditional beach holiday like we used to have. We've had loads of those over the years and that's why we kind of chose to go in May rather than going in the summer because we wanted to do a bit. We wanted to see if we could have a holiday in Alicante without hiring a car using public transport and walking and we wanted to do a bit of exploring both in Alicante and in surrounding areas. So we did do quite a lot of day trips. Um, the first one we did was a trip to Via Jehoisa. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, it is a town near Benidorm, um, along the coast from Alicante towards Benidorm, just south of Benidorm, and it is beautiful. The old part of the town is beautiful, and it has um, these really colourful houses, um, which are just beautiful. And I've seen videos before, I've seen photographs, I've wanted to go for a few years, but it was a little bit of a trek from where my parents' flat was, and when we because we usually used to go in the summer it was just too hot to even think about exploring and walking around so we got there by tram in Alicante they got this tram or light rail railway called Tramvia um, and it goes around various parts of Alicante city and then it also has a tram line that goes to Benidorm and when you get to Benidorm you can change a different tram line which goes to Denia um, so we got the tr uh, tram line to Benidorm and we got off of Via Joisa. I 
loved it it was beautiful there and the weather wasn't too hot either it was overcast to start with so it was fairly quiet and then towards the end the sun started coming out and then as we were about to leave when we were walking back to the train the clouds got the sky got really dark and there were some really dark clouds sort of over the mountains inland and it did rain when we got back to Alicante. So I think we got out of there just in time before it started uh, raining. Um, but it's a really beautiful place and you can reach it quite easily on the tram from Alicante. Now this next clip is about four minutes long. So if you don't fancy seeing it, you can just skip uh, forwards about four minutes and I'll see you after this clip from Via Joisa. <music> Another trip we did on the tramvia or the tram, we used the tram a lot to go to the beach. We would walk down to the market, uh, central market tram stop, 
So the tram has three stops in Alicante city centre, Luthoros uh, Market and uh, or Mercado and uh, Castillo. And the Castillo stop is close to the um, Archaeological Museum, which we also went to. The Archaeological Museum had an exhibition from the ter uh, Chinese Terracotta Army when we were there. So we did go, we paid five euros each and that included this um, Terracotta Army exhibition. It was quite warm in there and it's quite busy and I was in quite a lot of pain that day for some reason. And the Terracotta Army exhibition area did not have any seats. It does annoy me with museums that they don't make sure there's access to seating in every room. Um, and it is something I've had a bit of a more of a problem recently as my um, knees get worse and I've started having this um, hip problem also my back so Samuel was really interested in this exhibition he's seen it before in a bigger version of it in London before but he was really really keen to see this so I kind of walked through and looked at it I, I mean yes it's fascinating but I'm not a huge museum person um, especially not archaeological type stuff <laughs> I know I should be but I'm not so I walked through it a bit quicker and when I got to the room, because I think there were three or four rooms, and the last room had all the like soldiers in it, and they were in these glass cases. And um, when we got there, it was quite um, busy. There was like a school group in there, so I just walked through, took some pictures, looked at them, and then I went out of the exhibition and found somewhere to sit down. So I didn't do any filming there but I just wanted to mention the fact that if you're going to Alicante this year I think the exhibition is there till January next year so if you're going to Alicante at the moment it is worth looking at the um, archaeological museum museum it's called the Mark M-A-R-Q and it is just two minutes walk from the Mark Castillo uh, tram stop and it's really worth going and the coffee shop there is really good as well we went there and had a uh, drinks and cake afterwards and the lady who served us was really really nice and she spoke English and she was lovely and the cakes were absolutely delicious so I do recommend that as well I don't have any um footage from that but I just wanted to mention it um one of the other things we did on the tram was to go to Altea which is north of Benidorm so you had to get the tram to Benidorm and then switch there for the tram that goes to Denia um I fancied going as far as Denia. I don't know what Denia is like. If you've been, let me know. Um, never been that far, but from Alicante, I think the tram to Denia was like over three hours in total, and then we'd have to come back. So I kind of thought that would be a little bit of a waste of time. But the tram line, at least to Benidorm and from Benidorm to Altea, goes along the sea quite a big chunk of the way. So even if you have a day when it's maybe raining or the weather's not so great, and you just want to go on the train ride it's quite it's worth it because if you just get a tram to Benidorm and then get the next tram back it does go along the sea quite a lot and it is a beautiful um experience so I do recommend that but we got off in Benidorm we switched to the Denia train we got a few more stops to Altea it stops by the um bottom of Altea by the sea so Altea you've got like the newer part of the town at the bottom you've got beautiful beach and beautiful seafront area and then you walk up the hill into the old town um which is where most of this video is from i think uh, the video is about two and a half minutes so not too long so if you want to skip forward please do but then yeah um sorry altea is known for beautiful white houses and narrow streets and when you get to the top there's a um, really nice church that's free to go in and the beautiful views from the square um, it looked like when we got there, like every bit restaurant and business in that area was having deliveries because there were so many delivery vans there. I don't know whether they're limited to hours so they can use access the square. But there was just so many vans there and lorries there when we got there and they were struggling to all fit in and park and everything. So um, but it's a beautiful place. We've been there once before and it is worth visiting. It is I think you can drive up to the top and park somewhere like behind the old town um, but we walked up from the train station uh, it is hilly there are a lot of steps so if you struggle with walking and uphills and steps then it might be worth um, seeing if there's a car park near the top where you can drive up to the top um, 
but it is worth walking up it is beautiful so i do recommend that but if you go in the summer bear in mind that it's very hot and you're walking up in the heat it gets very very hot so maybe go in the morning or evening uh, then it's a little bit cooler <laughs> After Altea we got back on the train and we got as far as Benidorm and we've not really been to Benidorm properly before so we've stopped in Benidorm twice I think. One of the first times we went to Spain we went to a place called Guadalas which is inland uh, from Benidorm I think and afterwards um, it's a beautiful kind of hilltop uh, village, beautiful i um, only been there once and it's a long time ago but it was beautiful and then after we'd been there we drove down to Benidorm we drove down to the seafront I'm not sure whether we went to the Poniente beach or the Levante beach I got a feeling it was Poniente beach and we managed to find a parking space we parked we got out of the car it was so hot and we looked at the beach and we thought that's beautiful and we kind of looked at the skyline and the skyscrapers and we got back in the car and drove off because it was just middle of the day by then it was just so hot and then another time Simon and I went to Altea on the train again we got off the train in Benidorm we walked down to the seafront bought a drink in a bar and then we walked back up again because again it was so hot but I follow a lady who lives in Benidorm she's called Anna she does videos both in English and Spanish um, from in and around Benidorm area and I've been watching her videos for a while and I kind of become a bit more fascinated by Benidorm um, but the old town looked quite attractive and there is this viewpoint called the Mediterranean balcony which looked quite pretty and you know there is something fascinating about this kind of these skyscrapers like Manhattan on the Med so we decided to go we walked down the hill from the train station um, I think 
if you walk straight down to the uh, Mediterranean balcony, I think maybe it's like a 20 minute walk. It took us a lot longer than that because we were slightly wrong. Um, we found somewhere to have lunch and we had a meal of the day for lunch, which was very nice. And then we carried on, took loads of photos and some video, and then we walked straight back to the train station again. I must admit, I was struggling with the walking by then and I was in quite a lot of pain by the time we got back on the train and went back to Alicante. I don't know whether I would actually book a holiday in Benidorm. I, people seem to either love it or hate it, and I'm not sure that I love it, but it, it's a fascinating place. The beaches are stunning, and I know people who've had lovely holidays there, and I know some people love it. But, yeah, I'm happy to have seen a little bit more of it this time. These are the socks I finished while I've been on holiday. I finished one sock before we left and then I probably got to about there before we left. They knit a toe up and then we drove up to Wales, South Wales, the day before we went on holiday. So I probably knitted halfway up the foot and then I knitted the rest on holiday. So this is knitted using my Aventuras pattern. Uh, Aventuras gives you a choice of toe up, cuff down, two toes and two afterthought heels. I knitted these from the toe up in this um, alternating width pattern with uh, swirly afterthought heels. And I used uh, yarn from the Yarn Badger and it slows up, it's super wash merino, nylon, 400 meters per hundred grams. Really enjoy knitting these and I think I'm gonna enjoy wearing them, bright and colorful. Um, and then I cast on some new socks um, yesterday. I only knitted a tiny bit yesterday. Let's, I should have gotten this up before I started filming, but I didn't. So this is um, Fab Funky Fibers. Fab Funky Fibers. This has been a moustache for ages. It's called the Big One Mishmash. And it is 75% merino, 25% nylon, 400 meters per gram. So I guess it's the same base as this. It doesn't feel exactly the same, but um, I don't know. This is quite old. This has been moustache for a long time. I cast on yesterday and knitted half the toe. So most of that green bit. Again, doing toe up, my oven to this pattern. Um, I knitted probably most of that green bit today. And then I knitted the rest on the train today. I knitted all the way to... Um, Altea. We've been on the train from Alicante to Altea today, so I knitted all the way to Altea and then probably half of the way back from Benidorm. As I mentioned earlier, we were quite close to the um, central market in Alicante. Um, we walked down to the market tram station quite a few, well, virtually every single day. But we didn't stop in at the market till the second week of our holiday. They're only open in the morning, so they're open, I think it's from like seven to half past two. And half an hour later on the Saturday I think and they're closed on the Sunday and most of the time in the morning we were keen to go out and do whatever we we're going to do so I think if they'd been open in the afternoon and evening we might have gone earlier in the holiday and maybe more than once but because they were closed in the afternoon and evening um, we only went once it is a beautiful market it's on two floors I have actually walked through there before on my own but I just walked through there the building is quite beautiful from the outside and inside you've got um, loads of meat stalls, loads of fish and seafood and loads of fruit and veg. 
and there's a few other stores that sell a few other things as well but it's mostly fresh produce meat fish ham obviously because it's spain all that kind of stuff uh but it's worth a visit and it is beautiful there and behind the market there's a big square and a big coffee shop so we went there and had a drink afterwards and there's also a big um area there where there were three i think there were three floral stalls so three businesses selling flowers and the flowers were absolutely stunning they have some really i'm really into orchids and they have some gorgeous orchids but they were so big um and if i'd lived there i would have bought one but these orchids were like really tall uh, and they were amazing and if i'd lived there i would have bought one but obviously i can't bring an orchid back to the uk i didn't look at the price of them because orchids can be quite expensive here but they were absolutely stunning um the footage from alicante market is about three minutes so i hope you enjoy that We had a beautiful view um, from our Airbnb of the Santa Barbara Castle in Alicante. You can see Santa Barbara Castle from most of Alicante. We used to seeing it from the seafront. When we used to go to my parents' flat, we would go into Alicante in the evening, usually one evening per holiday, and walk along the seafront um, and through the old town and things like that. The old town is at the foot of the um, Santa Barbara Castle and the kind of seaside of it we were at behind it a bit further up we were actually about 10 minutes five minutes walk five ten minutes walk from the bull ring and about 15 minutes walk 20 15 20 minutes walk from the central market in Alicante um I've been to the Santa Barbara Castle before once we went up there once when we were in um, staying in my parents flat near Todvieja 
and uh, the weather wasn't great. I think it was raining, not horrendous rain, but like a little bit of light rain, I think. So we went to Santa Barbara Castle and that's the only time I've been before. So I was keen to go again. I actually did fancy walking up there or at least walking down again. But we did so much walking while we were there. When you're staying in a city centre and you don't have access to a car, you do end up walking a lot. And I have um, chronic back pain. I also have arthritis in both my knees. And I am starting to get a bit of problem with my hips when I do a lot of walking on tarmac. Um, so I was <laughs> in a lot of pain by this point because uh, this was later on in our holiday. <clears throat> Then we went to Santa Barbara Castle, so we decided we would not walk up there. You can drive, I think you can drive up there. I think there are buses up there, but there's also a lift from uh, opposite the beach, the main town beach in Alicante, Playa del Postiget. Um, if you walk, I don't think it's quite halfway along the beach, but if you walk along the beach and look across the road, the road there is really busy. So you want to cross over the road. Um, at either end of the beach halfway along the beach there's like a footbridge that goes across the beach and the lift is near there when you get to it it's fairly obvious um and you pay i think it was like 275 euros per person for the lift i think access to the castle is free um so if you want to walk up there you can get in for free i think um but we decided to pay for the lift that takes you up and you can get it back down if you want to walk down obviously you can do that um so we did that we went in the evening um a couple hours before they closed maybe and had a wander around and the views are absolutely amazing so this video will show you some of the beautiful views looking out over Alicante <music> Then our longest trip and the last one I'm going to show you from Alicante was our trip to Valencia. It is worth pre-booking a ticket and to be a bit careful about where you pre-book your train ticket from. So I looked at a few websites that were in English and the train tickets were more expensive. So I looked at the Renfe uh, website, R-E-N-F-E, -E, which is one of the um, Spanish train companies, I think. And depending on what uh, day you chose, and I only booked them like four days before, I think, um, but depending on which departure and... So what time you chose to go and day 
the price varied a lot and we actually managed to find tickets that I think were 9.55 euros per person each way so we got it for less than 40 euros for the two of us for a return ticket it is depending again depending on what train you choose um the train we did which was an intercity train was two hours to valencia it the first stop was valencia and then i think it stopped a couple of other places and carried on to barcelona but the first stop was valencia and you get booked seats and everything and it wasn't that busy and the seats gave you quite a lot of leg room so i was quite pleased for that so we got to um valencia about mid-morning and we should have planned a day a bit more and we should have thought about how much walking we were able to do but we didn't so we walked through the old town when we got there we went into this really beautiful church which the name i'll show you in the video in a minute um we walked around some parts of the old town um a few other bits sort of highlights and then we went to the arts and science park they have this festival every spring called Las Fallas, I think it is. Um, it's very confusing in, in Alicante and Valencia because it's in the Valencia region and they speak uh, normal Spanish, normal Spanish, is it Castellano Spanish it's called? Um, and they speak Valencian. So a lot of names are in both languages. And it was in Valencia, a lot of the names are in Valencian, which are different to the Spanish names. So that makes it a bit confusing with names of things. Sometimes it's fairly similar, sometimes it's not. But they have this festival every spring where they make these um, quite elaborate statues out of uh, flammable materials and they set fire to it basically. And each year they vote for one statue which will be saved and that goes in this museum we had a really lovely day in valencia but by the time we got back i was in so much pain struggled to walk back to the station we also struggled to find somewhere to eat dinner and we ended up going back to the station having mcdonald's which is really bad but we just couldn't find anywhere um and we running out of time and i was in too much pain uh, we did 21,000 steps that day, so I was exhausted. And when we got back to the flat, we were on the fourth floor, uh, which is five flights of stairs to walk up. And I was in so much pain by the time we got back. I don't know how I managed to drag myself up those stairs, but it was not much fun. <laughs> Thank you. 
once I'd finished my yarn badger socks, I um, in my last video, I showed some of the yarns I was considering taking. And I decided that, because I've knitted a lot of socks myself lately, I decided I would knit Simon some socks. So I showed my few versions, a uh, few options. And I don't think this was in the selection I brought out when I filmed my last episode. But I brought this one out, which is Fab Funky Fibers. And Simon chose this one. <laughs> so um, that's what we went with. Um, gorgeous colours. I have, I finished that one. And then... Um, before we came home, I cast one for the second sock, and before we left, I had finished most of the toes. So I'd done the first two stripes, and then I knitted till there on the way home. The way home did not go well. Um, we had booked a taxi to get us to the airport, because our flight was at 6am, and when I booked it, I looked on the Alicante Airport website and it said that the bus ran 20, the shuttle bus into the city centre ran every 20 minutes, 24 hours a day. It does not. It doesn't run every 20 minutes all through the day and it does not run at night. And our flight was at 6 a.m., which meant we had to be there no later than 4 a.m., preferably probably slightly earlier. So we booked a taxi. There's a local, they don't have Uber in uh, Alicante. So we booked a taxi through this taxi app. Um, that was recommended and um, we were a bit nervous about it whether the taxi was going to show up at three in the morning so we actually booked another taxi a few, couple of days before to take us into the city centre just as a test thing and that taxi showed up a couple of minutes early so we were like great felt confident and then the last day we were in Alicante it started raining and um, it was horrendous weather in the morning we woke up to a really bad thunderstorm and lightning five in the morning and really heavy rain all morning and then in the afternoon the rain eased off a bit and there were sort of spells of rain so we went out and we went to a couple of museums um in the old town the contemporary art museum and the fine arts museum i think it was um we were actually in the contemporary art museum when i had a notification on my phone saying that our taxi had been cancelled so i went on the app quickly and booked it again and then 30 seconds later, I had another message saying it was cancelled. So they clearly did not want to pick us up at three in the morning. So that was really frustrating. So we panicked a bit thinking, what do we do? So we decided, I checked what the nearest tourism information was. And it was down by the um, seafront. We were only five minutes walk away. And the opening hours, according to Google Maps, it was open. So we went down there and found that they were closed. A lot of businesses in Spain close when it rains. A lot of shops and things will close when it rains because basically most Spanish people don't go outside when it rains. Um, my daughter said this used to happen in Madrid when she was there. She said the streets were just empty when it rained, um, apart from foreigners. So we were a bit panicking what to do. Um, this was, you know, 12 hours before we had to leave for the airport. And we hadn't packed yet or anything so we discussed it and we decided we would um get the last bus to the airport decided after discussing various options i also looked at booking like a private tax uh, transfer to the airport but you don't know which websites are reputable and which are not and i didn't want to be scammed or stranded <laughs> at three in the morning so we decided the safest option was probably to get the bus and we didn't want to get the last bus in case it didn't turn up and the bus before that was an hour before that so it was about 20 past 10 half past 10 i think it was so we left the flat about 10 o'clock so got to alicante airport about 11 and um yes went to night alicante airport which is not good fun when you are in your 50s. I did it once at Heathrow Airport when I was 20. That's bad enough. I did not enjoy spending the night at Alicante Airport. We weren't the only ones doing it. There was quite a few people. We weren't allowed through security until about three in the morning. Um, so we sat in this coffee shop next to the arrivals area, which was open all night. Um, and there was quite a few people dotted around, but it wasn't very comfortable, so I didn't get any sleep and then um, slept on the plane for a while. Um, since I got home last night, I've knitted this bit. I put the marker in when I got home. I'll move the marker now up to there, so next episode I can tell you how far I've knit. So that was my Fab Funky Fiber Socks. <laughs>
Okay, I've just realised I've got to go uh, soon, so I'm going to show you this very quickly. I'll talk about this more next time, but I'm making a poncho in Cyberball 100, and it's difficult to show you because it's all bunched up, but it's... I've knitted... I've started the second ball. I don't know how much of the second ball I've knitted. I need to weigh it at the end of this repeat, but I really like it. It doesn't look very long, um, and I'm wondering whether I'm going to have... I think I'm going to have to use three balls because it doesn't, I don't feel like it's growing lengthwise. So when I have that 10 grams left, I'm going to take, put it onto um, a tubing and block it and see how long it is because it's not that long. I really would like it to go to like my waist or hips. So I may have to do, use the third ball, which I didn't want. I wanted it to be two balls only, but I may have to use the third ball. So that was the project I cast on just before we left and I worked on that one really flat. Socks were like a beach travel out and about project and the poncho was when we were in the flat uh, relaxing. I'm just editing the post podcast episode and I realised I completely forgot to add the details about the price draw. So thank you for getting me to 2,000 subscribers. We are well past that now. So I really appreciate that. If you haven't given this video a like yet and subscribe, please do. But the giveaway is um, a choice. So if you live outside the UK, if I send you a parcel, you will probably have to pay customs charges for that. So I'm willing to send it to anywhere in the world, but bear in mind that you will have probably have to pay customs charges if you live outside the UK. And if you live in a country where postage is or the postal service is a bit unreliable, there's a chance your parcel may not arrive. And I will not be sending out replacements <laughs> if the parcels don't arrive. So just bear that in mind. So in light of that, I'm also offering the choice between a physical parcel and a, a virtual parcel, so a digital um, digital price. So the choice is either forty pounds. UK pounds worth of goods from my store so you can choose between yarn beads um, knitting patterns which will be virtual because they're um, on Ravelry or Payhip um, my book at the moment I've only got easy laziness in stock or you can have so you can have 40 pounds worth of items from my sh shop 
or you can have one of my online courses for free. So the price is either £40 worth of items from my shop, your choice, or one of my online courses. So um, to be in with a chance of win, you have to make sure you subscribe and like this video and also leave me a comment and tell me where you like knitting and what you'd like to see from my videos in the future. Uh, so like this video, make sure you subscribe and then leave a comment and tell me what you um, want to see from me in the future and where you like knitting. And that's all you need to do and I will choose a winner. Um, what's the date in the air? So this is going to go up on, not sure, um, it's the 28th today. So this will be going up on the 1st of June. So let's leave it open till the 15th of June. So this price draw will be open till the 15th of June and then on the 15th of June I will close it and then a few days later I will do the price draw and uh, notify the winner. And I will reveal the winner in the first podcast after the 15th of June, so make sure you keep watching. So thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i'm sorry it was a little bit long but i hope you enjoyed it uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing and i'll leave all the links below this video if you have any questions just ask and don't forget to enter the giveaway um, and i will see you next time thanks for watching